From mobile apps that will help you craft unique melodies to portable electronic instruments, these are the best tools for music producers who want to create outside of the studio. So as you can see, I'm out here on a nature trail, and that's because there are so many powerful apps you can use just on your phone. There's one app in particular that can really power the rest, and that's the Splice app. You can go into packs, preview them, download sounds, add them to your library so you can instantly access them when you get home. An incredibly powerful feature of the app is the create mode, which allows you to find samples in the most musical way. And I think the coolest thing is that you can create stacks off of individual loops in the app. So if I go to this decap loop and hit this icon, Splice uses AI to match samples across the library to this loop. And there are several things you can do from here, like add in new layers, delete layers. You can swipe on layers indefinitely just to shuffle them, tap to mute them. Now, once you save a stack, you can export an Ableton project, a Studio One project, stems, or what I personally use the most is the stereo mix of the WAV file, which I can then use when I get back to my home studio or continue in one of the many amazing apps that are available for the phone, like Koala Sampler. Koala Sampler is an extremely powerful sampler and sequencer. It has some really, really fun effects processing. I actually took a stack, muted several layers, and kind of made several variations of one stack, bounced all those WAV files to different pads in Koala Sampler. So there's some with vocals, here's one with drums and everything. Just drums, some one shots. I'm going to set the BPM to 94 here, and we can just sequence a simple beat by recording. Two, ready, and. I've even mapped Koala Sampler to my action button on my iPhone. No snake. No snake. snake? Okay. Put on some hold on these effects. That B. If I could sample that B, if I like a. Here's Band Lab Sampler. Nice little auto truncate. For a free app, BandLab has an incredible amount of effect processing, and I think the UI is very user friendly. <laughs> and I really love the depth and scope of flip, like a nice little percussion hit. Like a little randomness of the bounce. Ooh. Not like that one. Let's get this into flip. So now if I go to an empty pad, go to browse, I can go find that sample. Random, 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 random. Randomness, randomness of the bounce. bounce. So another app that's really great is Life by XLN Audio. It's a field recorder app that automatically syncs to a desktop plugin so your samples are ready to be chopped right when you get back to the studio. Pretty cool. Right, 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 right. Now, once you start using a tablet like the iPad, the options start really opening up. When it comes to mobile DAWs, there are quite a few options to choose from. Cubasis by Steinberg is one of the best options since it works on both Android and iOS and supports AUV3, which is the plugin format for iOS. You might be surprised that some of your favorite desktop plugins are already available in the App Store. Other DAWs you should consider are BandLab, which has a bit of a more closed ecosystem, as well as Beatmaker 3, Logic Pro for iPad, and FL Mobile. I think Cubasis 3 and Logic Pro are the most feature rich, but you can't go wrong with any of these choices. I do think Logic Pro has the most flexible UI and best stock instruments and plugins.
instruments, there are a lot of options, especially on iOS. One of my favorites is Butter Synth by Arto Varala. If you use serum or pigments, you'll fall in love with Butter Synth quickly. The workflows are very similar, it features a dedicated FM engine, as well as a sampler and granular engine, and it runs well on the iPhone. Pretty sick to hook up a Bluetooth MIDI keyboard and have such a powerful synth in your pocket. Korg's legendary Chaosolator is available as a mobile app. This synth has a vast sonic range and offers a really unique way to play it. You drag your finger around the XY pad to play notes on the scale. It's easy to switch scales and I find this workflow really conducive for coming up with cool patterns and riffs. BA1 by Baby Audio is one of my go-to synths. All the presets in it are very inspiring. I really like how there's a randomize button. I feel like all synths should have this feature. It's a really fun way to see the breadth and scope of an instrument's capability. Recently, I've been using a really cool workflow for melodies using BA1, Fugue Machine, and AUM, or AUM, however you say it. AUM is a very flexible audio mixer and essentially a connection hub for your music apps. So I'm running Fugue Machine on a MIDI track, which plays back a pattern at four different speeds. Using AUM, I'm able to route each of the individual playheads to an individual instance of BA1. So all four of these BA1 patches sound different, and I've come up with some really cool melodies this way. If you're into granular sound design, Quanta by Audio Damage is an amazing choice. It's based off their powerful desktop plugin, Quanta 2. It has six voices with up to 100 simultaneous grains per voice. I love going into Splice, finding vocals, and dropping them into Quanta. I use this one on a regular basis. <laughs> I almost overlooked this one and so glad I didn't. Metal 5 is a modular synth that's reminiscent of Bass Plant. You can set up different lanes and add modules to each lane. This one's definitely fun to get lost in the sound design process, and it runs as a standalone MIDI plugin and effects plugin in your DAW. If you're looking for a virtual analog synth, you really need to check out Twin 3 by Fab Filter. Cyclop by Sugar Bites is great for bass music. Also, you can break into a little mini game and the preset is randomized for you a little bit as you play. Very fun feature. If you're looking for a dedicated FM synth, Nambu has six operators, a matrix workflow, which is very helpful for dialing in patches, and customizable LFOs, and even two-step sequencer. Come up with some pretty good FM bass stabs with Nambu, especially when adding distortion plugins like Saturn 2. Now there are too many effects to cover in this single video, but I want to rapid fire through some of my absolute favorites. Pulse stretch is great for sound design. It basically does extreme time stretching. Fab Filter has all their plugins available, but one to highlight is Pro Q3, widely regarded as one of the best EQs in the game. Baby Audio's Magic Dice is a very fun one. It's got 30 effects underneath the hood, and every time you hit the dice, a random chain is assembled. Texture by Audio Damage is fun for mangling your sounds. Clevgrain makes some really great plugins, but one you should check out is Haas 2. This is excellent for stereo imaging. A 
I've already talked about Fugue Machine, but another great MIDI effect is Suggestor 2. You can use this standalone or directly in a DAW to generate MIDI chord progressions. There's also so many great options for mobile MIDI controllers. I really love the Lumi keys because it's wireless, but it also has USB-C if you want to plug it in directly. It's got MPE, so if you apply pressure on the keys, it can affect the sound differently. Another controller that's really unique is this J-Play. It's a modular controller where you can take out different pads and the app itself is aware when you change these and it works in Cubasis, Logic Pro, and many more. So this is a really cool controller that allows you to have a variety of setups with a very minimal footprint. speakers I'm using the III Unit 4 wireless monitors. The biggest advantage of these is that they have low latency input so when you're playing on your pads there's no latency. It really does feel like magic when you place these speakers far away and jam on your instruments with that low latency. They also sound very balanced too. So that's the Koala sampler being triggered by the Novation Launchpad which is an amazing value controller. So there's so much incredible mobile hardware out there I only wanted to really focus on sampler first devices. And the first device I want to talk about is the Teenage Engineering EP133 KO2. It made a huge splash last year, and I think it was well-deserved. All the devices I'm talking about are battery-powered, but this one's specifically AAA batteries. It has a built-in speaker and microphone, but you can obviously attach external speakers and mics. One of the limitations is that it only has 64 megabytes of storage and no external storage options, but some might say this is actually a feature. And I do think there's a kind of a Buddhist sand sculpture type thing to this. You have to like erase your projects every week or whatever. But that hasn't really bothered me because with the KO2 and all these other devices I'm talking about, they all have desktop software which allows you to manage samples and allow you to transfer samples to these devices. My favorite feature of the KO2 though is the fun video game like display and the effects punch-ins. You can get super creative and really wild sound design in a variety of like seconds. Another incredible option for around the same price point is the Circuit Rhythm by Novation. It doesn't have a display, but it has way more internal storage, and it does offer external storage via a micro SD card. It has a little bit more connectivity on the back and a rechargeable battery via USB-C. One of the unique aspects of the Circuit Rhythm and, say, Circuit Tracks is that it has a 32-pad layout, which is great for sequencing. If you're into, like, techno or any kind of genre where you're really sequencing a lot, this might be the instrument for you. I also love the grid effects feature. You can get really performative with it. And if you're going to take a one shot and slice it to a keyboard mode, which all of these devices do, having the extra pads is really nice so you can get a little bit more melodic. Probably the most powerful all around is the SP404 MK2. This is powered by six AA batteries, but one of my favorite features is that it has USB-C, which does power, but it does audio through USB-C. So you can actually take this and plug it directly to your iPad Pro, which has USB-C, or maybe a new iPhone, and you can send audio from the SP404 to your iPhone or send audio from your iPhone to the SP4. You can go back and forth either way, Technology is pretty crazy. 
This one has more of an opaque workflow and there's a lot of menu diving, but it is the most powerful and it has so many features. Too many to talk about in this video. I've seen so many people integrate the SP404 into their setup and that's for a good reason. One of the best reasons to do this and my absolute favorite feature of this is this one button. This one right here, the mark button. This is like the capture button in Ableton or any kind of cache recording in your DAW that you're familiar with. Oftentimes when you're creating music, the best ideas come before you hit the record button. And if you hit the mark button, your samples will be automatically captured to a pad, even if you weren't recording already. Ableton's Push 3 is an excellent consideration, especially if you're a live user already. It features 64 MPE enabled pads, which means you can slide your finger across the pad to create subtle variations in the sound. And with the 64 pads, it makes it ideal for those who wanna use step sequencing in their workflow or play a lot of virtual instruments with the pads. Locking the pads into certain scales is great for coming up with melodies and chord progressions. The MPC Live 2 is an incredibly powerful instrument. It has world-class sampling capabilities and it's much more than a sampler. You can run a bunch of different virtual instruments that are developed specifically for the hardware. When you plug a MIDI keyboard up to it, it's essentially a powerful portable synthesizer. And there's some high quality sampled instruments as well. Another distinguishing factor is that it has a powerful speaker built in. Definitely the best I've heard in any portable electronic instrument. With the Splice app, you can download sounds on the go and then wirelessly sync them to your MPC. If you have mobile hotspot, your MPC can even tether off of your phone, really allowing you to get sounds wherever you are. So I'm gonna download some sounds from the Splice Originals pack and sync them to the MPC Live. Here are the one shot. Nice open hat. And some samples that I've chopped up here at the top. I hope you stumbled upon an app or a piece of gear that you can use in your production. I couldn't include everything into this one video, so if I missed any of your favorites, leave them in the comments below. As always, I hope you stay inspired and creative, and I'll catch y'all on the next one.